morning everyone! So it is almost 8am, not quite, and I am here to start another 24 hour reading challenge vlog for you because I really need to whittle down my TBR and today seemed like the perfect day to kick some books off my reading list and take a little break from work for two reasons. One of which is because yesterday I officially finished uh, my next children's book which is coming out with DK next year so that's one big project completed and I wanted to celebrate. And secondly, I just received possibly the most exciting parcel in the post which is actually from the sponsor of today's video. So, today's video is actually sponsored by Book of the Month. So Book of the Month is a subscription box service with a twist. So if you haven't heard of Book of the Month, what's unique about the subscription service is that you are actually able to choose from a selection of books each month. So rather than just being sent simply one book that you're not expecting and um, don't know what you're getting, you get to pick from a selection, meaning that there's a better or chance that you receive something you haven't read before, particularly given the fact that some of the books that come with Book of the Month aren't even out yet and are released exclusively early for Book of the Month, which is like super cool. And if there is a month where you don't fancy anything, you can actually skip over or request a backlist title. So some of their previous titles, which they have offered in previous months, will be still available in the month when you're picking your book. And you just get this fantastic range of books to pick from every month, basically. All of which I have received for November, which is just absolutely wild to me. So Book of the Month did me the great honour of offering to sponsor this video and actually sending me all the books that are available in November plus a couple of their add-ons for me to share with you in case you're interested in subscribing. If you are interested and haven't previously subscribed to Book of the Month, I actually have a link in the description box down below which you can click on and use the coupon code COZY in order to get your first box for only 9 99 So you're getting an exclusive hardback edition of a brand new book for $9.99. This subscription service is only currently available in the US, it's a US based subscription service but given that um, the largest proportion of my viewers are actually based in the US I still thought this would be something you'd be incredibly interested in hearing about. So without further ado, let's just take a look at the November titles, shall we? So first up is the one in the official Book of the Month box. So this is how your books will come when you order them and inside this we have a copy of The Family by Naomi Krupitsky. So this book is about two best friends who live next door to one another but their lives are not ordinary ones. They are actually both the daughters of mafia members or mob members so their childhood is a slightly different one and as they grow up and find love and move on and make their own lives they have to decide between their loyalties to their families, their loyalties to one another and whether they can balance all of that and what possible dangers might arise if they don't. Then next in my magical box we have some fantasy and this sounds like such an intriguing fantasy novel, it's quite a dark sounding fantasy novel called the Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker which is all about a half British, half Japanese young woman who is actually in the employ of the Goddess of Death and her role as the servant of the Goddess of Death which sounds absolutely fascinating and as you can already tell one of the great things about Book of the Month is you get a real range of genres to pick from which is fantastic so there's something for everybody. We then have A Little Hope by Ethan Jola. This is a somewhat domestic contemporary novel all about a community of neighbours. So we're in a small town in Connecticut and we're following the lives of all the different people living in this town on this street who are neighbours with one another and the uh, ways that their lives intertwine. We then have some contemporary romance which I'm super excited about because this is basically the only genre I want to read at the moment. I am all about the romance and that is How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. This is about a woman who finds out that her favourite celebrity is about to get married and she decides this is her last opportunity to actually meet him in person and tell him she's madly in love with him but she ends up taking the road trip to see Keanu with her best friend of many many years and they fall in love instead which I am so here for. Then a thriller which again suits me perfectly because I have been consuming thrillers left right and centre of late and that is The Collective No Killer Goes Unpunished punished by Alison Galen. This is about a woman who has lost her child to a tragedy and is determined to have revenge on the person she feels is responsible for that tragedy. So 
basically joins this like underground community of women who are out for revenge and she has to decide where to draw the line between revenge and straight up murder, <laughs> which sounds incredible. And if any of those five books tickles your fancy then these are actually the five that are available with your subscription in November. Plus there are some bonus books that you can choose to add on to your subscription, two of which I have been sent copies of and both of which are non-fiction. So for one we have Will Smith's autobiography which is super duper cool and then we have My Body by Emily Ratajkowski which is is again a non-fiction book um, from the perspective of this young model who's talking about um, basically like the modelling industry and the expectations of women's bodies in modern society and online and on social media. But once again a massive thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video which as I've already mentioned is a reading vlog and I am actually hoping to read one of these books during my 24 hour reading vlog but I'm going to allow my Patreons to pick it because in the next five minutes or so I have to head off and participate in reading sprints over on Patreon. This is something that I host every month for my Patreons a few times a month where we just like conduct re reading sprints live together. It's a lot of fun and we scheduled them for the morning today which is really really nice to do before work. Although obviously I'm having a fun reading day today to give myself a little bit of a rest after completing a big project and I'm going to ask them which one they think I should read and find out for you which I will update you on. Other than these books though however I do want to finish my current read because I'm literally 50 pages from the end so of course I want to you know wrap that up before I jump into something new and that is Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. This is the third and the final book in her romance series which starts with Fix Her Up, a contemporary romance series which I've read the first two books in, loved book one, hated book two, but I'm really enjoying book three so it's really nice that it's like brought it back for me <laughs> in book three. I am, I'm really enjoying this. It's bringing me a lot of like cheer and joy and exactly what I want from this genre. I then would like to also maybe make a dent in some of my comic book collection. So I've picked up a few comic book volumes recently that are firsts in their series so that I can try some new series and I have for example Spell on Wheels to the Backstagers and Zodiac Star Force, all of which are quite different genres and I'd like to read at least one of these so that I can find out if these are series that I want to carry on with because I'm coming to the end of a few favourite comic book series and you know need some replacements um, but other than that I don't know what my plans are, we'll see how much I actually manage to get read and whether I can fit in anything else, maybe I'll find that I speed through my book of the month book club pick and end up picking up an entirely new novel afterwards because I do want to really you know just knuckle down today, get some reading done, enjoy taking a day to just read and find out how much I can truly read in 24 hours and I do also need to do some writing for NaNoWriMo because I'm trying to complete that this month as well but that's neither here nor there. We are here for the reading and to see how much I can get read in 24 hours so without further ado let's crack on with the vlog. some successful sprints this morning. I managed to finish the last 50 pages of my book, Tools of Engagement, which was fantastic and I really ended up enjoying this one. I was concerned because like I mentioned I did not like book two in this series um, but it was actually far more heartwarming. The theme, <laughs> theme, the plot of this book is that we have a um, 30 year old woman who, or 29 year old woman who is tip. The plot of this one is that we have a woman who is 30 years old and her family own a construction company and her job is typically to stage the houses once they've done um, the renos to them in order to sell them. And that's her thing, like she's a perfectionist and she loves slash hates making things look perfect and she has an idea of how everything should be um, and it's something that everyone else admires in her but as we learn more about her is actually something that's a little bit detrimental to her happiness. And then we have a younger man who is a member of her brother's construction team and Bethany, the woman, has wanted to, you know, go off on her own for ages. She's wanted to take a leap and try doing actual renovation herself, not just 
decorating. She wants to be part of the process of renoing a house and her brother isn't giving her the opportunity to, so she decides to do it herself. And she ends up um, taking on this um, worker who was previously working for her brother Wes because Wes fancies her. Like that's like why he agrees to help, but also because he feels like he can see in her that she needs support and he like sees a crack in her like perfect exterior and thinks, wow, this beautiful, wonderful, intriguing woman that I'm so attracted to has these layers and I want to find more out about them. And it's about their romance. Wes, in the meantime, is also taking care of his six-year-old niece because his half-sister has uh, basically, like, done a runner. <laughs> um, she does pop back into the story. But for now, Wes is um, responsible for his young niece, which is also why he's moved to this town. And it's about their romance. And I really like those layers to their characters. Um, I enjoyed hearing about Bethany's anxieties and I enjoyed hearing about Wes struggling to um, feel at home, having grown up in foster care and now being responsible for his niece. Those elements I really, really loved, but it was also overall pretty lighthearted and fun and super steamy, which all of these books are. Really enjoyed Fixer Up, like I mentioned, it was also just like good fun, steamy romance. Um, but then I just hated book two. Like it was a second chance romance between a married couple whose relationship had become pretty toxic and uh, it never really felt like it improved for me. Like it felt like their relationship didn't wholly grow, grow, grow further than the toxicity in book two for me so I really didn't like that book and um, it felt very me Tarzan Eugene um but I did end up enjoying book three which is really nice that it returned to form for me and I would say you can read book three by itself but you would get a lot more context if you read book one because it's about Bethany's sister. Book two is about their mutual best friend. And I do think you could skip book two. Like if I was realistically going to recommend these books, I would say read book one and book three. You don't need to bo read book two. But I also get that a lot of us are completionists and you might want to read book two anyway. But that's my forewarning. Um, so now I'm going to kick off with my second book of the vlog, which is the Keeper of Night. So this was the book that um, my Patreons picked for me this morning uh, when we were doing our reading sprints and I'm super excited because I don't think I've read like a proper dark fantasy like this in a while and it sounds really interesting. I don't th think I've read a lot of fantasy either that anthropomorphizes death and has death goddesses in it minus maybe Terry Pratchett and this sounds tonally very very different. So yeah I'm excited to, to get started and that's basically it. I'm gonna drink my caffeine and I'm gonna enjoy my book so I'll check back in with you later. So I am 30 pages into The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. Um, it is after lunch time now because I spent some time over lunch just working on my NaNoWriMo project. Like I said, not only is it a reading day, but it's also just a bit of a chill, like kind of self-care day. And I'm not putting too much pressure on myself for NaNoWriMo. I'm just trying to enjoy having fun writing a contemporary romance, which is just a complete laugh like I'm having so much fun writing the kind of like humour and um like the silly flirty parts of it and it's yeah enjoyable so I have been reading this just a little bit before then and a little bit since then and really enjoying it because this is a fascinating concept the sort of mythos and um fantastical world building in this book so far is fascinating like I said I'm only about 10% of the way in but um that's all been established and it's just so interesting this is um technically a historical novel so at this point in the book I'm in the 1800s in Britain and it follows a young woman who like I mentioned is a uh, reaper and in this world there are lots and lots of reapers and they're basically messengers for like the top reaper like a head reaper the actual god of death but there are lots of gods of death so just like how in the reality of mythology um we have so many different cultures and so many different mythologies that there are lots of different gods of death so like there's a british death there is a japanese death there's a chinese death there's a Swedish death, there is a Greek death and they all um, are in charge of their own like 
clan of reapers who are in charge of dealing with the dead in their own homeland and their own culture. And our protagonist is actually mixed race in the sense that she's both mixed race but also in the sense that she is the child of a um, British reaper and a Japanese reaper which have very different powers and she lives in Britain and conduct her work in Britain but is treated very badly by the rest of her fellow reapers in Britain because she is mixed race and it's so interesting like I love that there's these different deaths for different worlds and that they have different powers and different traditions and different myths and legends just like in reality but it's all brought to life and coexists in this book what an interesting concept really enjoying that and I don't really know where this book is going to go at this point but I'm enjoying the premise so that's fab I am in a I am in a little bit of a my mind is a little bit all over the place I think because like I said I've been um, finishing up some big projects recently so I do tend to jump around things a little bit and because of that I think I might read a comic book though next, take a little break from my novel and read something that's a little bit quicker and a little bit shorter. So basically I'm just going to pick right now which one of these I'm going to read. If I'm going to read Spell on Wheels, The Backstagers, Zodiac Star Force or Chew. I think I'm going to read Chew because this is the one that's been on my TBR the longest. Like I only picked it up recently but I've been meaning to read it for years whereas all of these I've only heard about in like the past year so I think it'd be good to finally read this it's a sort of paranormal comic book about a police detective who has a um sort of special ability which has a name he this is it he's a, a cybopathic <laughs> which allows him to get psychic impressions from whatever he eats so I'm pretty sure he ends up eating murder victims in order to find out what happened to them which sounds so weird and yeah like I said I've been meaning to read it for years it's got great reviews so I think I'm gonna have a little chill time for the next hour or so and make way through this. So I finished my comic book, that's it upside down, but I finished my comic book and I really enjoyed this actually, I'm really glad I finally picked up, like I've mentioned, uh, I've been meaning to read this one for years, it's been recommended to me ever since I first got into comic books back in the days when I used to read all the fables um, and other series like that. So I'm glad I finally picked up because I am enjoying it and I do intend on carrying on with it. So I would say this was like a solid four star. It's such an interesting premise. It's quite humorous, um, but also like wacky and you don't know where it's going to go. Plus some strange and interesting world building. It's not really the art style I typically gravitate towards. I do quite like my cutesy art styles in my comic books these days it's what I prefer but it really works for this and I think it's really well done so it's been nice trying something a little bit different and I am past the 50 page mark on The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker so I'm definitely reading this more slowly than I planned I think I'm just reading more slowly than I thought I would today because I thought hey it's going to be like a fun day of reading and realistically my brain's a little bit fried so I haven't been able to focus as well on the reading but I'm so pleased with the 50 pages or so that I've read of this because I'm enjoying it so that's really nice I'm having great success with what I'm reading and my enjoyment of it and I'm going to carry on with it plus the, the 24 hours obviously isn't over it's about 8 p.m right now so I have all evening and a little bit of tomorrow if I wake up early enough so that should be fine I'll definitely read some more although I don't know if I'll switch to something a little bit more frivolous we'll see how I'm feeling as the evening progresses and I will say although like I'm saying I don't think I've read like as much as maybe I expected to I'm saying that as if this video is over we're only like halfway through but I guess I just thought I'd read more during the day 
what I'm trying to say is that even though I maybe haven't necessarily read as much as I thought I would during the day, I have met my NaNoWriMo goal for the day. I've written over 1,800 words, which means I succeeded for day two. I wrote a little bit less than the goal yesterday, but I was still pretty close to it and um, I'm still enjoying it. And I've just felt very caught up in that story. It's been really nice writing a contemporary romance, sort of establishing the two protagonists' characters in their chapters because it's um, moving back and forth between them. So I've now written a chapter from the female lead's perspective and a chapter from the male lead's perspective. They've met each other. There's been some antagonism. We've set up some of the plot and I'm having such a good time. So I'm so really pleased with my little kind of chill writing and reading day and I'm excited to see where the evening goes. I might read some more, I might write some more. Who knows? I'm definitely going to read some more, but I may also write some more and that may affect how much I read. So yeah, thought I would just update you on all of that and I will check in with you again in a few hours, I imagine. the 24 hours are up and I am very proud of myself right now for coming to you with no makeup on but I didn't want to put makeup on until later today and I didn't want this video this vlog this fun casual reading time to force me to do that if that makes sense like I didn't want to feel the need to because ain't nothing wrong with acne no shame here <laughs> um does not define me. So yeah, I, I'm I'm very proud of myself. It may seem like nothing to you, but I'm very proud of myself. Um, and I wanted to obviously update you on everything. So I didn't finish my fantasy novel. Sorry, I'm just worried my laptop's going to fall off the sofa. Um, I didn't finish my fantasy novel, but I'm about halfway through it now. So I feel like I made good progress. And since I haven't been reading a lot in that genre and particularly like that subset of fantasy recently I'm quite pleased with myself that I read that much of it because I think it's just a little bit slower reading than a lot of the thrillers and the romance I've been reading like those genres for me are like the quickest to read so it's been a transition and I'm enjoying getting back into it and I'm glad I picked it up and it's been fun just trying something that was randomly sent to me that I wasn't expecting which is the fun of subscription boxes right like you get to try something new so yeah I'm glad my Patreons chose that one and I'm gonna keep reading it I'm honestly shocked I haven't heard more buzz about it because it very much feels like something a lot of people who read um fantasy and like older YA fantasy on booktube would really really like um I think is going to be a big hit um when people do start reading it so I'm glad I was like you know early to it that's quite fun <laughs> um and I really enjoyed reading too I'm glad I found a new comic book series and obviously I ended up really enjoying the end of my contemporary romance uh, Tools for Engagement so overall I've like really enjoyed what I've read I don't feel like given that I effectively took the day off yesterday minus a few emails that I ended up reading way more than I could typically read in 24 hours and I think that is interesting. What I think I take away from this experience in particular is that just because I have extra time to read doesn't mean I read more. Like I think maybe I do just have a finite amount I can read in a day given my um, ability to concentrate on different things and um, the way my mind switches between things a lot. I think I just have, you know, like a finite number of pages although obviously there is like a higher end to that and I definitely think I read the higher end of that. I wouldn't read this much every single 24 hours but I don't feel like um I can actually give myself 24 hours and read like four books like some people do which is amazing but not for me really and I just need to accept that it's fine but I'm also really proud of the writing I did and that may also contribute to the reason that I didn't read as much as I thought I might because I thought I would finish the novel um but I am really enjoying writing my book for NaNoWriMo. It's so nice. It's such a fun book to be writing, this contemporary romance. It's just the tone and genre that I think I need to be writing in just now to just sort of love writing and have fun with writing and it be like this thing I can do 
in between hours when I need to do things more serious because today I need to start back on my PhD which I have fallen a little bit behind given that I've been focusing on my non-fiction children's book so I've dedicated so much time to my book that's coming out next year with DK that yeah I've let my PhD slip for the past month or so and I need to get back on that so it's going to be catch up and it's nice that I can just think to myself oh in the evening I get to write more of my contemporary romance and it just feels like I'm reading a contemporary romance but I'm writing it so I get to like make it exactly what I want to be so yeah that's been really nice and I've passed the sort of two day word goal and hopefully I'll manage to get up to the third day word goal today this evening but yeah that is pretty much the end of this reading vlog I hope you have enjoyed coming on this little short 24 hour journey with me Thank you so much once again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Don't forget, if you are interested in subscribing and you're based in the US, you can use the code COZY to get your first box for $9.99. I will have all the details linked in the description box down below. And if you are in the mood for some fantasy, I would highly recommend um, the book that I've been reading in this video for you to pick. So until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone.